Welcome to our job cast. Uh, today's session is called Think Like an Employer, uh, a recruiter's perspective of the hiring process. Uh, we are really excited to uh, give you a sneak peek into the mind of a recruiter today to help you with your job search journey. Uh, so here's our agenda. So we want to discuss hiring in a post-COVID world. We know that it's been the topic of conversation uh, for a lot of individuals. We know that it's impacted a lot of, a lot of people. Um, so we want to take some time today and really make sure that we are addressing those things. Uh, we're going to then also pull back the curtain for you on the mind of the recruiter, how employers go about uh, seeking talent, getting them into their business by uh, really educating you on the four phases of the hiring process. And then we're going to go into Q&A. Okay? Um, for those of you who I have not met, my name is Taylor Meadows. I'm an evangelist at Indeed. I've been at Indeed for uh, about three and a half years now. I do sit in Chicago, like I mentioned earlier, and I sit on a team called Employer Insights. Uh, and joined uh, me today is Nikki Stats. She's actually a recruiter at Indeed. Uh, we thought she would be a great resource for you uh, on this webinar so that you can hear directly from uh, a talent acquisition professional, directly from uh, the source bringing you jobs. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, here's what we know. Uh, we know that for you, for job seekers in general, especially right now, job search is full of uncertainty. Uh, every single person on this call, every single Indeedian that put together this webinar that is working behind the scenes right now on making it easier to find work, we've all been candidates before. We know how challenging it can be. There's nothing more frustrating than submitting your resume and not knowing where, you know, where it goes or not hearing back from an employer. And so those are the types of things that we want to talk to you about today uh, because we know that it can leave uh, an emotional impression uh, on anyone in the process. Um, it's a very mysterious process and it changes all the time. Uh, parts of it are very archaic and parts of it are very innovative. Uh, we are working very, very hard at Indeed to try to make this process easier and more digestible for people, um, which is essentially why we have come together today. So we're gonna debunk a lot of this for you today and then answer questions ongoing for you in Indeed community. Um, what's really important about this is that as we pull back the curtain, we want to just educate you on how to better position yourself uh, as candidates. Um, and we want to uh, give you some, some tidbits of information and some recommendations on ways that you can stand out above the crowd. Um, because we certainly know that it's easy now, especially with 40 million people on unemployment, um, to, to get lost in the shuffle. And that's what we want to help you uh, kind of navigate today. <sighs> We, we, I say this with such empathy. Uh, you know, we, we can't talk about all this without addressing uh, COVID-19. Um, 2020, man, it's been a year. Um, you know, we've had uh, pandemics and locusts coming out of the ground and, um, and, and riots and, and a lot of things happening um, that, that are distracting. Uh, but specific to COVID-19, a lot of things have changed uh, through the lens of being a job seeker, hiring practices, um, who is hiring, who is on a hiring freeze, all kinds of things are going on. And with the unemployment rate surging, we know that hiring rates have dropped and we know that this can be disappointing. But the good news is that as cities are starting to reintegrate and things are starting to reopen, um, a lot of businesses are coming back to life again. Um, and they're already beginning to put people back to work, but there are also a lot of organizations who are already hiring, um, who've actually been hiring during this whole pandemic. Uh, so let's kind of take a dive into what this looks like and how you can navigate this. Um, what we know is that during COVID-19 specifically, we've seen a surge in remote positions uh, becoming available. And to be honest with you, we're probably going to see a lift in, re in remote work uh, you know, across the board. Uh, one thing that I will mention to you is that when you go to Indeed now, this is something that our engineering team responded with pretty quickly when all of this kind of blew up. Uh, when you go to Indeed and you begin typing in what you want to do and where you want to do it, we have a new search filter available called Remote where you can actually look to see remote positions that are available and companies that are hiring uh, during COVID-19 and positions that are readily available for work. Uh, so the reason why we felt this was really important to mention is, is because our main mission right now is to help you get back to work faster. So when you run that search, use that search filter, it's gonna be really helpful for you in identifying work from home opportunities. 
Um, something else that we've seen an increase in right now too is, is virtual hiring practices. So uh, this isn't necessarily just the, the, the application process and the, and the interviewing process, but it's gonna be onboard and actually be getting the role as well. So, um, you know, as you begin thinking about how you can better position yourself as a candidate, think about how you can uh, use your, the virtual environment to your benefit and still cast a really great um, impression on a, on a recruiter or a company during this time. Um, and we're also seeing though that, you know, longer hiring timelines can take place. So don't be discouraged of this if you see this happening, but do know that things are definitely in motion. You know, when we research uh, the relationship between uh, job seekers and employers, what's really important to know is that the confidence curve that we see for job seekers and employers is roughly the same. So we know that it's a very stressful process to apply for an interview for, uh, for work. Um, but what we do want you to know as well that on the, on the employer side of the house, those recruiters, they're held to pretty strict standards of uh, when they need to hire positions and, and, they, and you know, who they need to get into those roles based on experience and skill sets and things like that. So you'll notice that especially during the interviewing phase, it's a stressful, it's a stressful time for both you and the employer. The reason why we felt that this was important to actually bring up is because we want to infuse humanity in this process on both sides of the house. So when you're a job seeker in an interview, we want you to bring your authentic self to that interview uh, to, right, to kind of bring down some of those walls. But as an employer and as a recruiter, we want them to make that environment safer and more enjoyable for you as well. But we just wanted to propose this data for you because we found it interesting that it's quite literally the same on both sides of the house simultaneously. So what we want to do now is, is we want to introduce you to the four main phases of the hiring process. I'm going to take you through uh, phases one and phases two, and then Nikki is going to take three and four and then round this off and we're going to then answer questions that you have. But the main uh, hiring process includes four phases called attract, then source, then engage, and then select. So let's uh, kick off with the attract phase. Um, when this is really uh, the employer making the case for the candidate, uh, to make sure that they are filling the role appropriately, quickly, and with the right individual. So during this phase, this is typically when uh, you see things like employers building their employer brand. If you're not familiar with employer brand, uh, it's essentially the way in which employers brand themselves as employers to you, the candidate, as opposed to maybe uh, you know, promoting a product or a service. This is where you're going to uh, be privy to information like uh, culture, perks, benefits, and the opportunities in-house for, uh, for working at that specific employer. You're going to find a lot of this information in the job description as well. Uh, we are working very hard uh, with our clients, employers, on how to create uh, more humane job descriptions that are, uh, quite frankly, more enticing, that includes more information about the organization, why you would want to come work there, and what that unique opportunity would have to offer. Uh, you know, it's really important to us that you as the job seeker can trust Indeed as a place to get all the information you need to make an informed decision to become potentially a new employee somewhere. Um, and then of course, what we do is, is we work with employers to help them sponsor jobs on Indeed. And what this does is it encourages the job posting itself to become more prevalent and relevant for job seekers with those credentials. So it's ever more important to make sure that you're inputting those proper keywords to the types of role and company that you're looking for inside of that what field on Indeed because those sponsored jobs are gonna then be matched in front of you for you to apply to them if they are a good fit. Now, what can you do? Um, so as you're going through this phase, it's, it's one thing to search for a job and to apply for it, but we wanna educate you on how to become even a better job seeker and candidate so that you are more quickly able to find work. What we'd encourage you to do is do your homework and research that employer. This means uh, going to the employer's company page on Indeed, reading those reviews, but we also want you to visit their corporate career site, become familiar with their application process. Um, really understand their mission and values. A, a pro tip that I can offer you, uh, going to the table, going to an interview, being versed in that company's mission statement uh, and really knowing what their values are, uh, you know, even what their products are and what they stand for, being able to speak to that eloquently in an interview is gonna allow you to stand out because it's gonna showcase to the employer that you've done your homework. I know this seems like common sense, but you would be surprised as to how many people will show up for an interview and not even know the product or service that the, that, that company sells um, or provides. 
So the more you know, homework you can do, the better. And also review their leadership team and what they stand for. That's also very important. We want you to read the job description very carefully. Uh, you know, as I said, as we do the work with employers to create really um, you know, crafty job descriptions, it's important that you read them thoroughly and make sure that you fully understand the breadth of the job, which is gonna ultimately then determine for you if you are a good fit for the role. We want you to self-select into a role as much as we want you to self-select out of a role if it's not the right fit. So keep that in mind, and if it's not the right fit, that's okay, move on to the next one. So this brings us to the source phase, which is where uh, employers are primarily focused on reviewing applicants and determining who would be the best fit for the role. Um, so um, during this portion, this is typically where employers are reviewing resumes. They're identifying, again, right, which applicants meet, meet the requirements and they're managing applications. We offer uh, through Indeed employers a dashboard that they can leverage to uh, manage candidates that are incoming from Indeed. Um, but there are also uh, platforms called ATSs, which is an, uh, an applicant tracking system. And this is essentially a third party service uh, that employers use. It's a piece of software that they use to collect applications and resumes. And this is typically where uh, recruiters and employers will then move people through the process. So when you're on the phone with a recruiter and they're scheduling your next interview, this is typically how they're managing you systematically in the process. Um, what's important to know about this is that if you've ever been on Indeed before and you notice that some jobs have an orange apply button and some jobs have a blue apply button, the orange apply button is actually going to be what we call Indeed Easy Apply, which is where you can apply to the job directly with your Indeed resume and bypass the ATS to where the resume is actually being received by the recruiter and by that recruiting team directly. Now, not to say that one is better than the other, it's definitely easier to apply with that, with that process, but the blue link is gonna then redirect you likely to an outside web page, which is where you have to go fill out like another form or an intake application form. That's when you'll know it's an ATS. Um, but what we would encourage you to do is, is to make sure that the resume that you submit is not overlooked. We want you to keep the format of it very simple and keep the content in your resume tailored to that job specifically so that it shows up uh, very quickly and that you are a prominent candidate, okay? Now, another very important thing to, to consider is that uh, employers uh, have what's called resume search. So when you're actually searching for jobs on Indeed, we want you to upload your resume to your profile. I don't know if you know this, but employers pay us backend access for access to our resume database. So as you are going in and searching for jobs, employers are actually then searching for keywords for candidates on the backend to go in and potentially send you a message first to indicate that they are interested in you as a candidate. So keep that in mind because it's really important to get your resume up there so that recruiters can potentially find you first, okay? So when you're updating your resume, here's a pro tip. Uh, we want you to update your resume at least once a month. Um, you're infinitely more likely to be contacted to an employer if you do this, because what happens is, is when you go in and update your resume on Indeed, there is a search filter in that resume search function for recruiters for recently updated resumes. Um, so if you're looking to be kind of pushed to the top of the list, uh, know that recruiters use this filter pretty frequently to see who has most recently updated their resume and who is um, available for work. This brings me to a really good point. On your resume, this is very, very important. On your resume on Indeed, if you are ready to get to work right now, if you're in a position where you've been laid off or furloughed, one thing you can do is hashtag ready to work on your resume. We now have embedded a search filter inside of that resume search platform for recruiters to see who is available to be contacted immediately for new jobs. This is something that our engineering team responded with during COVID as well. So know that that's an option for you as well to get hired faster, okay? so. Update your resume, identify popular keywords in that particular industry or for that role that could help you be uh, pushed to the top of that list. And then above all, we want you to also take an Indeed assessment. Um, so what this allows you to do is, is fill out a questionnaire when you're creating your profile and it uh, essentially allows you to highlight all of your qualifications. This allows us to better match you with jobs with our algorithm and it also then will indicate right to recruiters your skills, your experiences, and your background so that they can ultimately determine if you're a good fit. So if you have further questions on this, ask us in Indeed community and we can answer them later on. Um, but what I'm going to do now is, is introduce Nikki. Um, hi Nikki, thanks for joining us. Hi Taylor. Um, we're so happy to have you. Nikki's gonna take us through Engage um, 
uh, right now. And what we're going to do is, is, you know, we have about 15 more minutes left in, uh, in this webinar, but if you're able to hang on uh, for a couple minutes afterwards, we want to make sure that we have enough time for questions. Um, and we'll, so we'll probably hang out for about an additional five to 10 minutes. Um, but Nikki, I'm going to drive for you. Thank you for picking up uh, the rest of the webinar for us. And uh, we'll meet you at the end for, for questions. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Taylor. Um, so truly, these next slides, what I want to do is just add the recruiter uh, perspective and experience. Uh, there will be great content and extra links, um, but really, you'll be hearing my perspective as a recruiter who happens to be at Indeed. Um, and so we'll get going to on my first slide. So during Engage um, Employer Actions, we list a couple here on, on our slide, but ultimately, I am excited to dive in and start reaching out to candidates who I have deemed um, a good hopeful match for the role. I'm reviewing resumes and really um, assessing those key words that we've talked about throughout the presentation. I want to make sure that you know resumes and, and using the different um, social media matches the job description that I'm using to recruit for my role. Um, there are additional steps here in regards to not only outreaching, but then getting candidates on the phone and really hearing you come off paper, um, getting to know, you know your experience as it relates to the job and opportunity, and then also moving to an interview phase. All throughout these steps, I'm building trust and keeping you communicated and updated throughout my process. So while I ask from communication for, from job seekers, I also uh, deliver as well. Here are some tips, though, about what you can do as a job seeker while we're going through the engage phase. Um, I do encourage um, candidates to practice and get ready to you know, start interviewing. Um, how you sound on the phone as well um, through these virtual interviews during the times that we're in, um, really practice makes, um, you know, gets you ready. And I know it seems like a lot of work to have to go in and try to um, do the homework, understand the company, the role, but I hear that through our conversations. I hear how your research has been put in. I, I hear how engaged you are about our company, our mission. Um, I really am assessing uh, you throughout the process. From the moment we start communicating, I'm assessing how you might match with the role, the job, and the culture um, here at Indeed. And really, the communication does tell a lot, um, does tell me a lot about you. And so ideally, when I reach out, again, I, I'm as excited to hear from you as you're excited to hear from me. So please, um, hopefully promptly respond to my outreach if it's through email or if it's through a phone call. Um, be checking your inboxes and your voice messages because I'll, I may reach out by, by phone or by email. Um, ideally, again, I, I hope to hear from you within 24 hours of my outreach. We've got a few insider tips. Um, definitely want to take a moment to acknowledge, um, you may have heard the black hole issue in where I, as a job seeker, and, and I've been a job seeker myself, uh, I'm applying to multiple jobs, but I'm not hearing back. Here are a few tips that we highly encourage you to review. I know there's going to be a great resource added into our chat now that you can go and really uh, rely, rely on for, for hearing some, some talking points about the black hole. But what I just wanted to call out as a recruiter is I'm here. I'm human, but I'm actively reviewing all the job descriptions, all the applicants that are coming in for the roles. And I am, I am owning um, a variety of different roles, possibly also high volume niche roles, but I, I know how important it is to get a response. And so you may receive that response via email or by phone. Um, if we've had the opportunity to be on a phone screen, I will follow up and let you know um, via phone what the decision is. But I know and I wanted to acknowledge the black hole issue, call out the resources we've added in the chat, and, and let you know that it's top of mind and we're working, working on it every day so that we can get you clear communication throughout your job search. Another part of Engage is, again, um, researching the company. As a recruiter, I really understand that you might be juggling multiple job applications. You want to cast a wide net. You, you might be still understanding what could be that best match role for you. So you're applying to a variety of jobs. But what I can tell you is that it is important to be prepared for each phone screen or, or virtual interview. And you need to be able to personalize your conversation to each specific company that you're applying to. I, I, again, I'm looking for, have you done the research? Do you know the role and our mission and our values? Um, if it's relevant to the job description, do you know some current events or projects that we're working on through researching through, through Indeed social media or our blog that we have and post a lot of great activity that the company is doing? 
So again, just some highlights or tips while one is, you know, going about researching the company as well as using the Indeed resources like our company pages and um, other employers' uh, career sites or their greater website and their social media resources. When you're preparing for a call, I want to call out that there might be some nerves involved. You might be nervous. That's okay. Take a breath. Um, I, I applaud you for going on this job search journey, and I'm here for you once we start engaging and, again, building trust. These are some things that we encourage you to um, consider doing as you're preparing for a phone screen or, again, it could be even a video virtual interview. Um, I want to call out that practice, again, is key here um, as you're getting ready to get on the phone. Um, and so having that opportunity to go through your own elevator pitch, um, understanding how you might want to articulate or highlight your resume for the job that you've applied to that you're going to be getting on the phone with a recruiter. You might also want to do some research um, if it is, again, on our company pages to see how people have interviewed with, with the company and the questions that might come up and, and have some, again, pre-written um, pre answers to questions that you might be expecting. The more you prepare, again, the more confident I hear over the phone or during the virtual video interviews. As I've mentioned and we've mentioned before, during the times that we're in right now, a lot of companies... Um, are hosting their interviews virtually. What I wanna call out here is we have definitely, for example, Indeed, put a lot of effort into showing our culture through our different social media outlets. So you don't have to feel like, well, I didn't get to go into the office. I, I want to be able to show as much as I can about Indeed. Um, and so definitely encourage and may even send you links uh, how you can kind of interact with us online. But again, how you prepare for these virtual interviews is, is truly very similar to how you're going to be uh, preparing for um, an in-person interview. We've listed a couple highlights here in regards to how to prepare for a virtual interview checklist. I actually even used all of these to prepare for this virtual webinar. I made sure I had this quiet spot in my house. Um, I have moved my, my pups outside, but I wanna also just call out here, we're human we're going through an unprecedented time and I, I give you some grace. I understand that there might be um, some interruptions and, and I have patience. And, and so we'll get through this together. And now we're on the select. Um, this is one of my exciting uh, points in the hiring process where we're getting down to the finalists and I'm getting ready to extend an offer to, to our hopeful next future hire. So during select, these are some different stages that employers go through. For example, we, we've held the interviews. We're debriefing. We're talking about which candidates um, might be that best match. And we're getting ready to extend a job offer. What I wanted to call out here is that I've built a lot of trust with you, the job seeker. And so um, you should be prepared as I've been be being very transparent with what's coming next in our, in our next conversations. As a job seeker though, what you can do to prepare during the select phase are, are staying in touch with me as well. I, I feed off your communication. I'm excited to hear that you're engaged about this opportunity. So sending those post-interview thank yous, um, I, I definitely you know, understand if, if one is getting prepared to negotiate about their opportunity, um, this is a great time to do some research of just what average salaries are for the role that you've applied for in the geographic area that you're applying. And again, communication is key here. Now that we're getting to the final stage, if uh, suddenly you stop responding to emails or my calls, I, I may be worried that you're no longer interested in the role and I wanna be respectful of your time. So keep the communication flowing, especially at the select phase. Just a quick recap. Um, again, the four phases for employers during the hiring process are attract, source, engage, and select. We just want to take a moment to remember that on the other side of the hiring process is a human. Um, I, I'm going through the, the same things as, as the world is, is happening um, as you are. Um, if we can both have patience, um, we will, again, together, I'm excited to engage and be a part of the hiring process. But it's me. <laughs> We're now transitioning to our Q&A. And so we do have a couple um, pre-submitted questions that we're going to be diving into. And Taylor and I are going to be sharing um, responding. So the first question I believe um, I'll, I'll dive into. So how long after I've applied should I expect to hear back from an employer? 
I would say on average, it's about a week. Um, during this time, I always uh, call out being patient. Um, I would hope that how I uh, approach, again, transparent communication, that the recruiter is communicating to you when they'll be able to respond and, and follow up with a decision, but on average, about a week. Awesome. Thank you, Nikki. <clears throat> so I'll take the next one. Um, are there any special skills employers look for when hiring for remote positions? Um, so the answer is yes. Um, so think about this, right? When you are applying for a remote position, employers are going to look for things like, uh, you know, are you independent? Are you uh, self-reliant, self-disciplined, well-organized? You know, can you be counted on? Um, are you good at communication? Uh, what I would recommend is, you know, in preparing for those video interviews, um, having done your homework, right, and coming to the table prepared with technology, all that good stuff is going to be able to indicate all of these things for you. But this also might be really good uh, information or content to put in your resume. So if this is the type of, uh, if these are the skill sets that employers are looking for for remote positions, you know, right now. Jot some of these down, put them in your resume, and they might generate some traction with keywords uh, directly from uh, the resume itself. Our next question, how should I tell the recruiter about an employment gap? This is where honesty comes in to the conversation. Um, be honest and, and transparent. I understand that people go through job changes. They may, be, they may have been recruited away from um, a role after being at that previous role for a short amount of time, you know, making those best decisions for you during your job search. Uh, you know yourself best. But during this conversation about explaining, be open and honest and transparent with your recruiter. Hey, Nikki, can I expand on that one really quick? Absolutely. So if someone, let's say that someone maybe was laid off, uh, maybe they've been furloughed, or maybe they were terminated for whatever reason it, it might be. What, as a recruiter, what, what advice would you give those individuals so that they feel prepared to re-enter the workforce and have a confident conversation in an interview? I always am, if one feels comfortable about diving into those types of transitions away from a company, um, I, I tell them to be positive. While that could have been, and I want to call out, that could have been a traumatic experience to be furloughed or to be laid off, and I don't want to not acknowledge that, but to stay positive about your previous employer when you're explaining that gap will really um, show your professionalism, and, and again, it, it could be helping you, um, helping lead towards moving to another step in the interview process. Thank you. I know that's really tough for a lot of people, and they feel... Um, that they don't know how to approach that. So I think that maintaining positivity is, is key. I love that. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's see here. Does your resume design play a factor in the hiring process? So the short answer is yes, um, right? Great content in a resume uh, can definitely be highlighted by a good design. Um, I would say that because a lot of resumes are now being submitted digitally, you know, you wanna keep it to like a page, maybe front back if you have a lot of experience that you wanna talk about. Um, but what I would say is, is don't get too, uh, good design is good. What I would say is, is don't get too caught up in the design in that, for example, when you upload your resume to Indeed, we have a, we have a, a design template that's already inside of the profile module itself for you to replicate your information. So there's going to be little room to actually create uh, uh, you know, a, a, a colorful, unique design, because what we try to do is, is we try to keep it ATS friendly so that when you do submit your application, um, it's a very quick, seamless transition into that system. Um, even with that easy apply function, a lot of uh, companies are able to kind of to tether that over. So know that that is something to keep in mind as well. All right, our next question. How can you tell when a recruiter is serious about moving you forward to the hiring manager? So as a recruiter, I'll be very honest with you. If, if the call is going well, I'll let you know that I am excited to move you along uh, and submit you to the hiring manager. Of course, there could be one-off situations where more collaboration is involved, where the hiring manager may ask to review candidates before making um, the decisions on who moves on to next interviews. But again, as a recruiter, I try to be as open and honest as possible during the call. So you'll, you'll probably know if you're moving on. <clears throat> awesome. Um, how do you know or how do employers assess things like culture fit and professionalism when the hiring process is virtual? Um, this is a great question. Um, so a lot of it is the exact same. So, uh, you know, like, for example, you could choose to have maybe a virtual background if you wanted to <laughs> mask your apartment. Um, but honestly, what I would recommend is, um, you know, just 
make sure that your space is clean. Um, make sure that right, you know that that you are able to be seen uh, well. Um, but again, if employers are looking for candidates, right, as you can see here, who are independent, well organized, self disciplined. Um, I think that it's really important just to make sure that, that that's all done up front. But again, like we talked about, do your research, be very versed in the company, what they believe in and what the role is. Um, and I think that could help. Another thing that I think could help you is, um, you know, I know that preparing for an interview can be, can be really challenging. What I always advise my friends or, you know, job seekers uh, when they're in the process, think of maybe two to three stories that you can have in your back pocket that would speak to an experience you've had in the workplace in the past. Maybe it's a project that you've led, um, you know, initiative that you've supported that you're really proud of because a lot of those behavioral based questions can, uh, can fit those answers. And so when I think of things like professionalism, it's going to be more about putting a humane, uh, you know, kind of spin on, on an experience versus fumbling over your words. So that could be something that could help you as well. So our next question, how should I incorporate my self-employment on my resume? So definitely include this under your work experience. And as you're applying again to jobs and you're reviewing job descriptions, call out and have specific examples of, of this self-employment that relate to the job description. So you can use the format as the rest of your work experience, but again, personalize it to the job that you're applying to. Um, but if you are also, if you have um, freelance or contract work that you wanna highlight individually, you can um, do that as well. Perfect. Um, so what information should I provide when uh, asked for references? So uh, this is a good question. And Nikki, if there's anything additional that you uh, want to uh, include here, let me know. Um, but you definitely want to include the reference name, their position, the company that they are at, um, address, phone number, email, and then a brief relationship description. I think that that part is really important because it's going to uh, just provide some context um, on the call. But this is definitely something that, that you should keep in mind. Uh, Nikki, is there anything as a recruiter, is there anything else that you look for from an information perspective regarding references? I know it seems like a lot, but this is this is great information because I want to correlate, you know, when you work together, was it a mentor, was it a manager, was this a peer or a stakeholder relationship? This is all great and things that, you know, I look for when, when asking for references. So how, how do I stand out as a candidate during COVID-19 and what is Indeed doing to support people who were displaced? It, it is a lot to ask for a job seeker to, to be so engaged during their job search, but please, you know, working on your resume, making sure that you have relevant information um, so that those keywords are going to be coming up in recruiter searches. Um, we definitely use a lot in regards to searching through keywords to find candidates that relate to the job descriptions that we're supporting. Um, you can also add, again, as Taylor had mentioned, the hashtag ready to work to your Indeed resume so that we, um, the employers, can know immediately um, if you're available for, for work right away. We can filter by this tag. Amazing. Um, so those were the questions that we had. Um, so uh, I'll just, I'm going to take us home. And um, like I said, Indeed community is a great place to go in and ask additional questions. Um, Y'all, we are here to help you. Uh, we know that, that this is a trying time. If you go to Indeed.com, um, right on our main webpage, there is a link to our COVID-19 Resource Center. Our team has done a fantastic job with this landing site. Um, amazing resources in terms of uh, additional information to help you navigate job search during this time. Tips, tricks, all kinds of good stuff. Um, in there for you. This is also the same portal that we're using for employers as well to help educate them on how to be better um, with hiring processes. So visit this page. I think it could be really helpful for you. And hey, we would love for you to invite you back to additional webinars. Um, a lot of you probably found this workshop from that site, but um, our job cast is listed on that page as well. Um, so please you know, come in, uh, register for a webcast. We're all kind of stuck in the house right now. Some of us are finally you know, re-entering you know, phases uh, and restaurants are opening and things like that. Um, but if you're looking to educate yourself further as, as a job seeker, we've got tons of resources for you and job cast is one of them. So personally, I want to thank you for joining. Thank you for giving us your attention. Uh, much appreciated. We hope that you found this somewhat valuable, not very valuable. Hope so. And if you have any additional questions, feel free to let us know. Um, but we appreciate you. We're going to end the broadcast um, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much.